This is a walkthrough on how to discover undocumented APIs and use them in your code. Uh, here I have the title music app and here I have a program called Fiddler which is a web proxy software that allows you to see network requests and I'm going to turn on this live traffic button here and I'm going to go to the title and let's just search for a poll. We'll just do a few things here. We'll replay a track. Now I'll switch over here. I'll stop the capture. You can see we've made a ton of network requests here in the process of using title. Um, if I were doing multiple things on the web, I might want to filter. And what I'm looking for here is api.title.com. What we want to look for in the response is a JSON file, something that's returning JSON back to us. Uh, looks like we've got two things here. If we click on one of them, uh, down here we see our JSON response. So it's returning items and this cursor null property. Um, so up here is the request and it shows the headers. So we have our host, api.title.com, as well as this authorization header, which is gives us a bearer token that we can use um, to make further API requests. So that's our authentication for the API. Um, so you could just copy that value and place it in your code. And you can also look at the raw request is get api.title.com profiles 18995320 so so that's apparently my profile id and then all of these other parameters are used to return specific data back from the api um, but we can look at those in a more organized manner by clicking on the params tab and you can see we're limiting our results to 500, um, setting our locale to US, um, and as you can see, uh, returned nothing that useful really in the JSON response, but uh, that is a usable um, request we could make in, say, JavaScript. And in fact, if we want to uh, copy this as JavaScript, um, you can see under the copy menu, we have copy as fetch here. Um, if you use Python, you could do Python, um, but I'm going to use fetch. I'll just go into VS Code and paste that here. And you can see we have a valid fetch request in JavaScript. Uh, a lot of this stuff we probably wouldn't need and could strip out. Um, and in fact, I've got a sort of working example here where I'm doing that. Um, I've got my API address. I've got a route and I've got my parameters. And so I'm just doing an async await here. Uh, this is Node.js, so um, on my root route, I'm saying fetch music, then send that data to the front of the browser. The fetch music function has a response from the API, which is an async await. And I request that route the only data I'm passing here is the type of request, which is a get versus, say, a post. And then these headers, I've passed my authorization token. I'm telling it to expect uh, JSON, and I return that response. So if we run that, let me go to our browser, localhost 3000. Oh, my token's expired. So I'll probably go back to title, copy that bear token, and then you can just replace that here. Refresh, and there you go. Um, I'm getting a response back. Now this was a different request um, than what we looked at before, and you can see it's actually now returning items. We've got Interpol, Sonic Youth, Tool, Arcade Fire. So that's how you would uh, 
use an undocumented API in JavaScript.